Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right. It's time for tuning in today. Got a guest on. Got a guest on. Got um, my first actual proper amateur I've interviewed on this channel. I've interviewed a couple of pros, plenty of female fighters, but you're the first kind of guy I've interviewed who's been around the amateur scene. This is Tyree Campbell. You... Good amateur, cr cruiserweight, but actually it's a heavyweight as an amateur. I'm just used to saying cruiserweight. You've recently just gone onto the seniors now, gone into fighting seniors. Mm -hmm. English champion, just going to... The goal is for, obviously, now is to get onto the Team GB squad. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Firstly, thank you for having me on the channel, uh, G-Man. It's great to be the first amateur. And, yeah, obviously, I've had um, success at junior and uh, youth games in the amateurs. And now it's um, to do the exact same. I want to... Two national titles, one at junior, one at youth, and now the next stage is to um, win, at win one at senior and push on to GB. You're only 20 years old, and even for just someone of 20 years old, you've done a lot like in the amateurs with regards, you know, b before step to senior level. How many years has it been like that you've been boxing? Like, what, what started you boxing, and how has the journey been so far? Um, so, I first got into boxing, I, I, I remember I came home one night and I said, to my old man now, can you teach me how to fight? Can you teach me how to fight? So he got me a punch bag and he hung it up to my room. And um, yeah, I was just, I was, he was teaching me the basics there. And then uh, one night we went to a scout hut, a local scout hut that was doing a bit of um, boxing training there. It wasn't even a proper boxing gym. And there was like, I started hitting the bag and all that. Obviously, he didn't spar the first time. So I was like, wow, you're talented, you're talented. And I must have been about nine, ten at the time. I was talented, I was thinking, me talented and in, at this time i was rubbish at every other sport football, <laughs> basketball you know whatever sport there was i was rubbish and um to hear that you're talented was um you know music to my ears so I kept coming back kept going back and i remember on that first car journey i was to my dad's like no i don't want to go I don't, i'm not getting punched in the face <laughs> now i get home <laughs> see what i mean but um i kept coming back kept coming back and uh, i began to grow in confidence as a as a, as a young boy and um you know, all these lessons, boxing teaches you confidence, stuff like that. So I began growing in confidence as a young boy, and I kept going. And um, obviously, it's led me on to my success at junior uh, youth level, winning two national titles, five London titles, and um, being in three uh, national finals, and then international silver medals. Yeah, you've, been, you've done a lot, like, as a junior. And you've been on the same squad as Dennis McCann. Now, he's gone over pro. He went over pro quite young. You've stayed amateur. Obviously, the goal I'd imagine for you is first and foremost get on the GB squad. But is the goal really the next Olympic Games? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the goal. Um, obviously, Dennis has decided to turn over. That's his choice, and he's um, making a, a a good amount of great noise in the in the professional ring. You know, I'm mm. happy to see it from someone from the same stable as myself. It's it's a it's a great thing to see. But I decided to stay amateur. I want that uh, Olympic gold and then to make the transition into professional ring. I guess you're lucky in a sense that the, the next Olympic cycle is shorter because yeah. the 2020 Olympics happened in 2021 so it's only another two would be only another what, two years after this summer so is that kind of something that's really kind of keen your mind get to this Olympics I'll still have youth on my side I'll be in the still early 20s and then see where like the pro career takes me. Yeah exactly I, I will still have the youth on my side and that's, that's the goal, you know, whenever I'm in the gym, whenever I'm training, you know, that's that's the goal that's in my head. Obviously, I don't want to skip these stages that uh, that it takes to get there, but the ultimate goal is to get to the Olympics when I'm running. I'm thinking about getting to the Olympics when I'm training. I'm thinking about getting to the Olympics. And then, um, obviously, like you said, I'll still be young to turn over and um, push on from there. But let's see what the journey takes us. Do you ever think that there's a, a case that fighters... They chase that Olympic goal so much that they end up putting their best years in amateur. Like, for example, you're very lucky in that regard. You kind of know your plan is, and if you get to where obviously you want to get to get, you'll be still reasonably young. When you see fighters who they've chased the Olympics maybe over two cycles to maybe not get there, or maybe just miss out, or they've got there and underperformed, they're now in their thirties. Do you think that that is maybe something that you wouldn't advise, or is it a case of if the Olympics didn't work out this time, would you be willing to chase it still? It depends on what stage you're at in your career. Obviously, you can be on the GB and uh, compete in, and you might not have made the first Olympics. Like for the likes of uh, Fraser Clark, that was um, just that pro. He's obviously missed out the first and second time to Anthony Joshua and Joe Joyce. But all that t 
during that time you have gained experience, gained experience. Um, I don't I don't want to be one of them fighters where where I'm turned pro and I'm saying oh, I'm learning on the job constantly mm-hmm. learning on the job. Uh, I made this mistake, but it's fine. I'm learning on the job. Do you know what I mean, uh, that experience, that phrase I had, is all bagged experience. He's fought without a head guard. He's fought internationally. Um, he's fought at a higher level than probably some of the opponents he's fighting now. So um, it's all second nature to him now. Apart from obviously the crowd, the audience, and stuff like that, all the other stuff is second nature. The head guards have been removed. Some people turn pro, and they've not even had uh, fought without a head guard yet. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. They, they have to take that experience on the night. And um, obviously, I, I want to, you know, follow the traditional route, go to the Olympics, gain that experience, and then make that transition to the professional ring. You've already shared the ring with a couple of professionals now, even as an amateur. It was, what was it, back end of 2020 when Lawrence Okoli was fighting, I can't remember the guy, the guy's name is a very difficult name, but it was a Polish cruiserweight who was undefeated at the time. And you're one of the sparring partners going into that camp. How was that? And how did that come about, actually? Um, that was great. That was great. Uh, uh, Lawrence uh, let me come down to get some rounds in. And uh, at that time, I, I think I was just touching cruiserweight. Like, I'm not even fully going into cruiserweight yet. That's, that's the funny thing about it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's why I want to keep getting this experience. And um, yeah, anyway, back to your question. Lawrence let me come down uh, to spar him. I uh, had some great rounds. Obviously, I was, Lawrence was at Repton my amateur club a while back and uh, I've known him since then so um, yeah he let me come down and get some rounds in it was a great experience um, obviously I learned a lot from him and at that time he was actually meant to fight for the world title originally remember when he mm. um, knocked out that Polish fire um, so he was meant to fight for the world title then so it was great to be in camp with him then and then I also sparred him after he fought for the world title so obviously congratulated him and um, it's good to see him doing well from when he was at Repton to what he's doing now is that kind of the motivation like I mean as you were saying like Lawrence Acoli is kind of it's a different kind of story with him like he was someone who liked that he did didn't have like the extensive amateur background that you yourself would have had but he's been able to make the most of his talent and you know just his, his natural gifts and has done great things in the sport of boxing in such a short space of time compared to like some of the guys on his squad when he was in the Olympic Games you, know, you had your Felix Cassius you know your Joshua Boazzi who were still kind of British level and you have a Cody who didn't have the experience that they did to go on to do what he's done. It's quite incredible. Yeah, no, his, his story is um, a great story, you know, and he always backs himself, you know, obviously. Um, I can't remember the age where he got into boxing, but obviously he said it himself. He was overweight. Uh, he was working at McDonald's, and look at where he is now. And um, it's, it's a great thing to see. And I've got a lot of respect for Lawrence because um, he always has shows me a lot of respect and time. And, um, yeah, it's a great thing to see from where he was at to where he's at now. Even when I saw him at Repton, you know, that was, it's, 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 it's still a big stage to where he's at now, do you know what I mean? So, it's mm-hmm. great to see. And it's good to have another English world champion. It is. I, you're doing something now that I think that most boxers are missing out on, not doing this. Yeah. You have your own YouTube channel now. And it, it's very different to when you see, like, to the kind of YouTubers, like the Jake Pauls. You're kind of showing your journey from training and you know, you're showing the difference between like some a grassroots amateur, you know, in the UK to say a YouTube YouTuber now, like as we saw that show last night, where they have the sparring with Shannon Briggs and people like that. Whereas you're showing kind of your own training, grassroots, trying to get on the Team GB squad and then further. Do you want to tell us a bit more about the channel? Um, yeah, I just started up my own channel, um, Ready Money Parry. Go check that out. Don't forget mm-hmm. to subscribe. Um, yeah, I've just started my own channel, um, showing what it's like training. Uh, I actually got the opportunity to visit a gym in um, Birmingham called Manning's Gym, um, which is a professional boxing training camp. So I showed what it's like to train like a pro as well. But showing that step from amateur to pro uh, on the channel, training footage. Um, I trained with the likes of Adele Riley on there. Um, also, again, showing what it's like to train like a pro. So a bit of both the amateur and the um, what it's like to train as a pro professional and uh yeah i see the youtubers taking over our industry so <laughs> i'm about to take over that industry too <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on um i just it's fresh in people's minds and i know a lot of people were um watching videos on it we're talking about it. what were your thoughts on the events last night um because there was obviously a, there was obviously a youtube boxing match on and to say it was kind of <laughs> went into chaos is an understatement and um, did you see it and what were your thoughts on the like the, the many issues that happened in those fights 
I actually gave it a watch, uh, um, the card from start to finish. I wouldn't normally watch the card or, you know, take uh, so much of an insight to it. But um, I actually gave it a watch, and um, don't get me wrong, those it's 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 great to see them embrace the sport and um, do what professional fighters do or boxers do, take camps, um, eat healthy and stuff like that. There was a few like things like clash of heads and stuff like that, which wasn't mm -hmm. great to see, but. Um, you know, people running in the ring as well, which wasn't so great to see. But um, as a whole, it's good to see them showing interest in the sport and um, uh, show what it's like to be a boxer. Do you think that kind of the catch twenty two is is that like it brings so many, it brings such a new audience in that we'll see a lot more of this because you have promoters who are seeing like numbers go through the roof just by putting two YouTubers or maybe four YouTubers on having a couple of cards, having like little nut and fights and just loads of chaos going on to the hardcore fan. That might, that might be like, what the hell is this? But to a promoter looking, he's thinking I'm getting record numbers. So do you think that's going to continue? Yeah. yeah I, get, I, I bet the promoters are loving it. But, um, I think, I think their audience is great because, um, they have more of a younger audience from kids in the, uh, in the early, early teens. Do you know what I mean? So, cause they're entertainers at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So they've got a wider audience in that aspect of things, and um, I think it's great because it will inspire them, the children that are watching them, to get into boxing and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, the pros might have the likes of myself um, or older, a much older audience. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you're showing what it's like to be a boxer and showing it to a younger audience. It, it, it's great motivation for them to get into boxing. Do you know what I mean? So, I think I think it's a great thing. I was gonna say, do you think that that is um, that's important as well? Is that we have whatever way we can do it, we get new people involved in boxing, you know, at grassroots level, at young level, even if it's a case of them looking at a chaotic event. If that was maybe the turning point to maybe them going into a gym and maybe bringing their friends, that's essentially coming to bring us the new crop of you know, in 10, 15 years' time, they could be at one of the Olympic Games. Do you think if that, if, if that, if YouTube boxing ends up bringing that in aspect into the sport, do you think it's a good thing? I mean, someone might have been watching the likes of KSI fight, you know, just because KSI is his um, idol or whatever, you know, or favourite entertainer. You might watch KSI fight and be like, I want to try boxing and then end up being the next world champion, you, you know. Um, some people don't discover their talents as well, do you know what I mean, from an early yeah. age. So if a kid watches them and then tries boxing and realises he's good at boxing or told he's good at boxing, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to see, you know. Who knows what you can go on to achieve? That's a good example. Like Lawrence Acoli, I remember watching AJ was saying, like when he was working at McDonald's, he was saying, like, watching AJ win at uh, London was one of the biggest inspirations he had to really, you know, get into boxing, get his act together and take it, like, take it to the next level. I wouldn't even be shocked if in a couple of years' time we're seeing someone, you know, going to wherever the Olympics will be saying, I watched Jake Paul, you know, fight Tommy Fury or someone like that. And that yeah. got me into boxing. Exactly, exactly. Whatever gets them into the sport and encourages them to um, be the best of themselves is, is what's important at the end of the day. I always do in these interviews. I always ask whoever I'm interviewing who who got them really inspired into boxing and who will be the fighters that they'd look up to from, from any era. So who will be Tariq Campbell's like inspirations who maybe got them into boxing and who will be the fighters he kind of would look, maybe not look up to, but have the most respect for now and in the past. Um, I think inspiration is a strong word, to be fair. Um, I'm more inspired than both my parents, to be fair, than I am of any fighter. But I have great respect for all fighters, you know. Um, fighters that I look at and watch from and learn are the likes of, you know, Tommy Hearn, Sugar mm -hmm. Ray, um, a bit of Mayavar, a bit of Roy Jones, and a bit of Kai Zaghi. And um, <clears throat> I think Kai Zaghi's a great fighter. Kai right? um, Zaghi's tremendous, he, absolutely. I don't think he gets enough praise. I don't get some praise from fans. Usyk as well, nowadays, is a, is a fighter that I watch a lot of. Um, but yeah, if, don't get me wrong, if I saw one of them in public, I'd be like, oh, right, there's... <laughs> or something like that, you know what I mean? But um, inspiration is a strong word. I, I, I take more inspiration uh, from my parents, to be honest. That's a great way. That's a, 
that's a great inspiration to take as well like um because a lot of people they do i always find that a lot of people they some people they put like fighters on a pedestal so like if they were inspired by would we'll say someone like a george foreman or someone like that they'd only look at them in, in a positive aspect they wouldn't look at maybe some of the negative traits or something like that whereas you saying your parents i mean i think that's the best inspiration you can get and how did they how do they like in terms of boxing like how were they about it um my dad's at every session you know if you've seen me in the gym you see my dad you know what i mean whether it's you know london or um manchester or even you know, timbuktu you know what i mean you're gonna see <laughs> him he's at every session um my mom she doesn't really like to see her boy get hit in the face too much you know? <laughs> she has been to fights and stuff like that but she she doesn't want me to ruin my looks you know what i mean so um, <laughs> that which is perfectly fine um she says if if if, if she sees me get in her face she might end up backing one of them up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, my dad's at every session um, supporting uh, uh, in whatever way he can. And like I said, in, I think at the start of this, when I first got into boxing, it was just literally me and him, or, or me hitting the punch bag and him teaching me the fundamentals. And, um, you know, he's, he's been there with me every step of the way. It's a beautiful thing to see. It is. Your dad a big boxing fan as well? Would, like, aside from you, would he be a big fan? Um, I would say so. I would say so. He's always... Um, watching and learning and uh try to help me in whichever way possible he can do you know what i mean obviously i'm always growing and getting better as a fighter and he's um always watching and learning to make sure he's you know there to help me in whatever way every step of the, every step of the way do you know what i mean yeah that'd be a great story and like fingers crossed like it goes the way we you plan and you know he gets to see you in the next olympics um which i'm not even sure i'm not even sure 100 percent sure where the next one is I can't remember actually where the next Olympic Games uh, are going to take place. Paris. Paris, Paris. Paris. Yeah, Paris 2024. I always lose track of like the locations, wherever they're going to be, and I always one continent to another. But before we end this, I'm very much track of that, mate. yeah, <laughs> that's the one you have like you're literally in your goal of that date in Paris in 2024. That's the goal. Exactly, exactly. That's the goal. I've got, I've got it written on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like, kind of fights that are happening now, all right. Obviously, I want your you obviously do boxing videos as well. You obviously know a lot about boxing yourself. I want, I always want to get people's opinion on some of the upcoming fights. And the main fight that's on everyone's lips right now is obviously Tyson Fury, Dillian White. You've actually, you actually spent a bit of time training alongside Dillian White in the past, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. When I was a boy, a bit younger, when Dillian was uh, first starting out his professional career, um, I used to train alongside him. And um, to see his um, growth from then to now is... Is, is amazing, do you know what I mean? And he's obviously local as well. Obviously, he's living in Portugal now, but he was local. And um, it's, it's a great thing to see his transition and um, see how he's grown as a fighter in the professional ranks. So I gotta ask you. Yeah, go on. So Fury and Floyd, how do you see that fight going? And who do you have? Uh, I can't, I can't call the winner right now. I can't call the winner right now. Um, I, I actually think Dylan's gonna be Tyson Fury's toughest opponent to date because um he's more of a boxer fighter you'll see people would expect it to be Wilder but Wilder's a great fighter don't get me wrong but you know Wilder his um a lot of his tools is his right hand you know what I mean if he mm -hmm. lands, you're going to sleep no matter who it is maybe not Tyson Fury but any other man you're going to bed you know what I mean but Dylan White's kind of a, a boxer fighter he's got a good jab a good hook on him you know he's known for his hook but yeah he's very good jab well I, I think I think Dylan White's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good fight, no matter what. As I think as well. I, I don't. I, I'm leaning towards Tyson Fury, but I just I, the people who say it's easy for Fury, I, I just don't see that happening. I, I see it being a really, really tough fight, and one of the fights that you won't be able to take your eyes off, even if it's a boring round. That you'll always be wary of something exciting happening. I think. I think whatever fight uh, Tyson Fury's in is gonna be an exciting fight because he's a great fighter, no matter what. You know what I mean, I'm um, very, very talented, a gifted heavyweight, but. Uh, I think I think I think it'll be a good fight. I think Dylan White is going to be at his. Well, I hope he's at his best. I think he'll be a bit at his best anyway. And um, yeah, like I said, he's a good boxer fighter, so um, it's going to be a great fight. In terms of fights across the pond, obviously they announced during the week that Canelo Bivol is going to be happening in May. Now, what are your thoughts on that one? Because in terms of names, Bivol is not really the name you'd expect. But in terms of skills, I mean, he has bags of it. How do you see that one? Canelo versus Bivol is a good fight. I, I see Canelo winning winning mm -hmm. that one because I think I think Canelo is the you know the best fighter of this era to today. But um, Mayweather, 
like uh, Catting in this era. Um, uh, Bivol lost his last opponent was Richards, right? Chris Richards. He had a fight to start at the end of last year, and it was another twelve round. That one, the, the last fight I saw was him against Craig Richards because I was actually sparring Craig Richards a while back as well, and um, Craig started to show his uh, ability and his skills towards the end of the fight, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, um, he ended up giving a uh, Bivol a good, good fight, but Canelo is on the completely another level. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Although he's going up in weight, isn't he? Um, yes. I think I think Canelo still comes out on top, but it's it's kind of frightening to see this. Like he's just yeah, you... demolishing through the weights, isn't it? They think it's a bit it's a bit wary. By the time I turn pro, he might even be heavyweight or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's remarkable because like Floyd Mayweather did something similar, but. When he would move up in weight, like for example, when he went to Welter, he fought Baldemir. Canelo's fighting Bill. It's like yeah. the world's apart. It's like Mayweather took an easy touch and Canelo, there's no easy touch at like heavyweight, but he took one of the, like, you would probably put Bill number two. So he's fighting the number two in the division, who's one of the best. There's, there's, there's levels in boxing. Bill's a, a great fighter, but, you know, when this is all said and done, Canelo's going to go down in history as one of the best fighters. Uh, ever the sport of Canelo's goal is to be the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. Do you think he would get that? He could get that title away from Chavez. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mexico's had a few, few tough, um, great fighters. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's, it's a difficult, difficult one to call there. I don't. I, I wouldn't be able to comment on that one. <laughs> I think that that is his goal. I think most people would say who would say so Chavez is the greatest Mexican. And I think that's Canelo's ultimate goal. And if you did two weight undisputed in a four belt era, it'd be pretty hard to argue with that. And I think that's Canelo's main goal is to get two undisputed in four belt era, which is crazy. It's unthinkable, really, when you think about it in that regard. Uh, if, if, I think he'll definitely go down as the uh, best Mexican fight of this era, if anything. Do you know what I mean? So, that is definitely. Uh, he's, he's killing the game. He's killing the game. My last fight, which I want to talk about, is kind of a fight that's. It's not officially announced, but it seems like we might be getting it. Amir Khan and Kell Brook too. Looks like Khan might be invoking the rematch. Obviously, the the set the first fight was kind of an anti climax. I thought I thought it would be more competitive than that. What are your thoughts on that? And what do you think about someone like Amir Khan, who's definitely looking like he's one foot out the door, but looking to maybe stick around? What What are your thoughts on that? You think that's a mistake? Firstly, I think Amir Khan is a legend in in the British sport of boxing. I kind of knew Kelbrook was going to win. Um, ever since the fight was announced, I, I, I was favoured uh, Kelbrook to win. And to be honest, it's not a fight that I want to see again. As much as that fight was great, uh, they're both coming towards, you know, or at the end of their careers. And you've got to think about your health and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. obviously, as a boxer, you know how important that is. Do you know what I mean? So when you see fighters that are ageing a bit, uh, you've got to show their respect, but you've got to, you know, be honest and be like, you know, I think it's time for you guys to hang up the gloves. As much as you guys are legends of sport, I think it's time to call it a day and um, go and kill it in another industry. I think that that's literally the advice I'd be giving them. I think that's spot on. In terms of it, you pretty much nailed all the questions I wanted. Uh, we've gone a little over 20 minutes there. To finish it up, is there anything you want to close with? Like, is there anything you want to plug your YouTube, your Instagram, and maybe give the people yeah. something, just one last little kind of snippet about yourself to go with? Um, I know G-Man's got a good amount of subscribers. I see him growing. Yeah. Go and check out my YouTube channel already. Really <laughs> um, uh, drop a subscribe and follow the journey from now so you don't miss a single moment. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you that are going to be supporting. And hopefully I can get to meet you one day. And G-Man, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's great to be the first uh, amateur on your channel, as you said earlier. And um, I appreciate that. It's absolutely no problem, mate. And like that... I'll leave a link to your YouTube channel. I'll pin it in the comments for anyone who's interested in it. And for sure, hopefully, fingers crossed, great things in the future. And as you say, you've got Paris 2024 on your wall. And hopefully, I'm interviewing you after that with a medal to go. 100%. Whenever you want an interview, I'm always there, man. Mate, I appreciate that. Well, as I said, I'm going to leave this one here. But as I said, Tariq Campbell, look him up on Instagram, Ready Money Tariq, YouTube, Ready Money Tariq. If there's any fights coming up as well, fingers crossed, you know, we can see highlights of some of them online as well. And as I said, nothing but the best for the future, mate. Thanks for coming on and giving me the time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anytime, man.